Well, our special guest this week is a rising star in the world of one mate Porsche racing. He's the reigning Porsche Michelin Sprint Challenge champion, and he's a superstar Michelin junior in the Porsche Pace Carrera Cup Australia. His name is Harry Jones. He drives the Helimods car for McElroy Racing. G'day, Harry. Morning, Trailsy. How are you? Mate, I'm well, thanks. I uh, hope you are as well. Sure am. Excellent. Um, it's been a long time since we last spoke at the Australian Grand Prix about 15 years ago in March this yeah. year. It feels <laughs> like that. Um, what have you been doing in the interim during this enforced shutdown? We've all been enjoying, not enjoying, whatever has been going on. Yeah, it's been, a, it's been a pretty strange time for me. I've uh, obviously not been in a car very much. I've had to focus or divert my time more to uni. So um, I've been studying a lot, sort of gone back to a full-time program at uni. So just trying to shoot through my degree as quickly as I can and just make the most of, I guess, almost the off-season that we've got in front of us. So um, yeah, I've been busy, been having a bit of fun, bought a go-kart as well to sort of get back out on track and was actually never driven a kart before. So that's been something new for me to dip my toe in the water with. So it's been good. There's two things I want to touch on there. You'd never driven a kart before. And we've talked about your background in the sport and how you came up into Porsche racing wasn't the traditional path. And I guess that explains it, having not done karting as a part of your junior career. Yeah, correct. I actually, um, I started in downhill mountain biking when I was younger and then hopped into a Formula Ford when I was 15. Um, Because my dad's always been involved in motorsport. He he loves it. So I just sort of had a couple of test days more so to learn how to drive a car and drive like a manual gearbox and everything. Um, but then, yeah, obviously fell in love with it and went from there. But yeah, having not driven a car, I was uh, pretty surprised at how fast they actually are and how physical they are in your body as well. So I couldn't really walk for the next couple of days after hopping in and did like a hundred and something laps, but no, it's good fun. Well, that's how I feel like after I go high karting. So I can only imagine what a, a proper one's like. Uh, and the other point is the university stuff. And we've talked in commentary over the last couple of years in Cup Challenge and the first couple of rounds of Carrera Cup this year, how you're trying to be a professional race car driver. You're doing some work at McElroy, but you're also studying full-time as well. So just tell me about the uni degree and how that's going. Yeah, so I'm doing a mechanical engineering degree um, in my third year now. I've got two years remaining, which is... Uh, should definitely want to get it over with, but no, it's a good degree. I'm actually um, working at Halimods now as well. So I'm doing my engineering internship, um, which is a good bit of experience for me to get the opportunity to, I guess, apply the theory that I'm learning at uni then to a practical application. Um, but yeah, I mean, mechanical engineering, I've always loved math and science at school, which is, I guess, pretty rare, but I do enjoy the degree. And, and yeah, I've been like going back to a full-time, um, full-time course now. Uh, I've been part-time for the past year. Um, yeah, I guess it makes me appreciate a bit more what we're doing and get a bit more busy with it. Did you take the degree because you felt it might help your motorsport prospects as well? Because there's definitely crossover with such an engineering emphasis on motorsport these days. Yeah, that sure is. That was definitely part of it. Um, I started off doing a dual degree of math and engineering. Um, and I thought there was going to be a lot more crossover with the math side, like math and engineering sort of seem like they go hand in hand. But um, I think just sticking to engineering is what I really chose to do. And there is definitely a lot of crossover between engineering and motorsport. Um, there's definitely been a few cases where it's, been, it's, it's helped me, I guess, work with my engineers at the track um, to help cast it up and, and whatnot. So, yeah, I definitely appreciate doing the degree. Uh, the Porsche Pace and Michelin Virtual Cup wrapped up last week. We had six pretty exciting rounds. It must have been nice just to keep the eye in with a bit of virtual real racing um and it turned out to be a really competitive championship as well did you enjoy it yeah i loved it it was good to i guess yeah have that opportunity to be i guess in a race car while we can't actually be in a race car so it was a lot of fun as well we obviously we're in like all of the drivers are in discord chat together so we have a bit of banter going on and actually get to to know our competitors a lot more as well so there's good camaraderie within within the whole career cup squad but um yeah it was good like i think we finished second or third Overall in the championship, which was pretty cool. I didn't really do much time on the sim prior to this virtual cup. And, but yeah, ultimately it was just a lot of fun and, and good to get amongst it. And cool to experience some different tracks where at some point you may be able to race a cup car. Silverstone, maybe a possibility in Supercup. Le Mans, cup cars race there every year. So get some different racetrack experience as well as some of the famous local places like Bathurst and Phillip Island. Yeah, exactly right. No, it was a lot of fun. Now, you're a lucky boy because you've actually been in a race car 
uh, a couple of times since the sport shut down or Crow Cup especially shut down in late March. Uh, just tell me a bit about the testing you and the team at McElroy have been doing. Yeah, so I've actually got a pretty good testing program going ahead at McElroy Racing. We've been at, at a local track at Queensland Raceway a few times. Um, flew down to Sydney a couple of weeks ago before it was hot spot <laughs> to get some testing in there. And then I think we're off to off to the bend actually in a couple of weeks' time as well. So no, we're definitely definitely doing as much as we can to to stay fit and keep our eye in and just get in, get in the car as much as we can. So it's been good. And seat time's so important, isn't it? Especially during this enforced off-season that just keeping yourself sharp and, and that muscle memory of driving a racing car important to keep up. Yeah, exactly right. It was interesting. The first test day at QR, after being on a simulator for this virtual cup for so long, I got in the car in the first two laps. I'd, I was driving the car like a simulator. So I think I overshot my braking mark by like 20 metres the first attempt and then forgot that it was real life and I couldn't get away with <laughs> spinning out and everything as well. So no, it's good to get back in the real thing. Yeah, no reset button or uh, yeah. damage turned <laughs> off or set setups and things like that. Yeah, um, exactly right. I imagine being a fit young professional athlete that you are, that you've been keeping up the training during the time off as well. Has that been a, a regular part of your routine? Yeah, for sure. It's been good to get in a, a consistent routine lately, obviously not having a lot of external commitments. So I've been able to focus a lot on on my physical training um, with Tim just at Fluid Performance. We've been working a lot in the gym and then obviously just going out on my mountain bike, um, just trying to keep busy, really, just trying to keep busy, keep active and, and yeah, just hoping that we can get back in a race car soon and, and I guess apply the fitness that we've gained. And final one, uh, we got four races in in March at the Adelaide 500 and the Australian Grand Prix where we were lucky enough to get one race in. How did you unpick your first couple of rounds in Carrera Cup as a full-time driver, bearing in mind you did Gold Coast late last year. Was it what you expected? Was there more coming? How did you feel that you rolled out of the box? I felt um, in Adelaide, I rolled out of the box pretty well. Um, we definitely had a lot of car speed, but ultimately I made a little mistake in qualifying and that sort of just put me on the back foot for the rest of the weekend. But um, the Grand Prix was a big one. Uh, it, I struggled a bit there just having one practice session straight into qualifying and then straight into a race as well. Um, yeah, I mean... I guess we were on the, the right track. We had good momentum behind us. And if we had have had a couple more rounds after the Grand Prix, um, I definitely think we would have worked our way further up the grid. Um, but I guess we haven't lost, lost focus. So hopefully when the, the series starts back up again, we, we'll be right at the front. As we talk, it's late July. Do you realise it's almost 12 months since you won the Sprint Challenge last year? Yeah, that's a long time ago. <laughs> Actually, I think as we talk, it was this weekend, 12 months ago, you ended up bunkered in a sand trap at Queensland when you were trying to narrate a, a hot lap. For yeah, yeah, yeah. I've um, not been allowed to forget that one. I think Timmy <laughs> gives me a lot of for that. And I think it was a Friday afternoon, um, all set to pack up and then put it in a gravel trap and made Timmy scrape some gravel out of it underneath my car for the rest of the day. In your defence, it did start raining midway through <laughs> yeah. the TV hot lap. Yeah. That, I yeah. have seen the footage. It exists. It hasn't jumped out on the internet yet. <laughs> might maybe as a 12 month anniversary <laughs> oh uh, gosh thanks for joining us mate really appreciate the catch up look forward to seeing you back at a real world racetrack sometime soon yeah can't wait thanks rosie